Like, yeah, look at him. He looks like, you know. So there's a cannon shooting out naked men. Uh huh, good, good. They're falling on me. Oh no, it's raining men. It, it literally is. So we're here to spread the good word of Cho Anarchy this week, a game mm -hmm. that is about intergalactic, godlike bodybuilders. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that, but, you know, that's a thing you'll see as the show goes on. So if you're unprepared, I'll brief you a little bit. These are homoerotic shooters for the PC Engine. Uh, to any Twitch cops who may be reviewing this episode, there's no nudity in these games. Mm -hmm. I made sure. You're not going to see a single wiener. That's that's the Retro Pals promise. Not a dick. However, you will see a lot of comedic and suggestive imagery. I wouldn't even say the suggestiveness goes over the line. It's very mm -hmm. it's very tongue in cheek. It's very uh, it's it's something everyone can enjoy. Everyone from toddlers to grandmas, they can all look at Cho Anarchy and feel joy within them. All right, so to further brief you, the first game may not be what you're expecting if you've heard of Cho Anarchy by reputation. It's really the second game where things ramp up. So if if we're a few minutes into the first game and you're you're thinking, oh, I must be thinking of a different game. Yes, you are. That is the second game you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. However, I think we need the context of the first game to really emphasize just how off the rails the second game went and how much more amazing it is in comparison. So shall we get started? Sure. Now you may need to know, before this, NCS and its publishing label Messiah, they produced a game on Sega Genesis called Wings of War, spelled W-O-R. Uh, it was known as G-Dog in Japan. Oh. That is a game where you controlled, like, uh, it was kind of like an angel. It was a buff dude with wings. He wasn't, like, super buff or anything. But the seeds for the Cho Anarchy series were planted in that game, if you want to give it a brief look. So this intro says there was a massive explosion at the bodybuilding competition. Oh, uh, shit. The evil King Bode Bilda mm -hmm. is, uh, is taking charge. He's ruling over the galaxy. And it's up to the angels Ida Ten and Ben Ten, as well as these guys, Adon and Samson, to save the day. <laughs> yeah, there's giant muscle men beating up on the angels. No! You, you can't have that. There's Ida Ten. We have it's... freed our bodybuilder sonas. <laughs> is her name really Ben Ten? Yeah, her name is Ben Ten. Anyway, the Bode Builder Empire is a big Japanese pun because De means emperor and his name is Bill, so Bode Bill. Oh, I get it. I get and it, it just kind of goes on like that for the whole game. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, now you can be Ben Ten if you want. Uh, she has a different super weapon, which fills most of the screen compared to Ida Ten. However, Ida Ten is the only character who can use the men's beam, so we're going to be playing as Ida Ten. Yeah, so if you hold down the fire button for a few seconds, it charges up the men's beam, and then when you let it go, it does this. It's this big-ass, all-penetrating beam. One of the first things you're going to notice is the music. Uh, this music is not replaced. It's not a joke soundtrack that we put on ourselves. This is the actual CD soundtrack. Soon, we can get our bodybuilder friends as options, pretty much, so we will have a triple penetrating beam. So the first game is more like Wings of War, I would say, than the Cho Anarchy sequels. Uh, it's here that they started to get their footing. They were really experimenting to see how far they could push things. And what ended up happening is the second game was pretty much a parody of this game. So if you look at the stuff in this game, it'll probably make more sense later, because they're going to be making fun of it. You're also going to see a whole lot of different bizarre bosses in this game. It's really these games' claim to fame. Alongside, you know, all the muscle men. Look at this guy. He's pointing at you so accusatorily. You, you did this. You and your muscle gods. Now hopefully I can at least get through this level, because this level is where the game starts to get pretty strange. In fact, what I want to do right now is take a death. Because weirdly enough, this game has continues. Amazing, right? Especially because the second game doesn't. We're going to have to do a one credit clear on the him. second game. I love him. This is the best continue screen, by the way. <laughs> I'm still going to go with Eda 10. I just like my men's beam too much. Yeah, this is the level where they start ramping up a little bit. Luckily we still have more uh, chanting in the background. You know what it reminded me of the first time I played this? The fucking <laughs> soundtrack to Rugrats. <laughs> yes! Isn't that exactly what it is? Yes! Yes! This is exactly what's playing while Tommy Pickles, like, <laughs> is, 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 is doing some, some, just pulling out like a fucking monkey wrench from his diaper. And he's kind of like, fucking... <laughs> Music to pull a monkey wrench out of your diaper, too. Oh, hello, Thomas. Oh my god, Thomas! 
Oh, I crashed right into, his, <laughs> right. right into his smokestack. Thomas, you've been working out. I love how buff Thomas is. It's disgusting. Yeah. The visceral, veiny arms on him. Mm -hmm. Thomas is, ah. is uh, he is hashtag goals. And that's the end of Cho Anarchy. Yeah, I, I showed you buff Thomas the tank engine. That was my main goal here. I like him. So now the main event. You've seen Cho Anarchy. Um, you may have some idea of where they might be going for a sequel, but if you've never seen that sequel, you don't know. You really don't know. This is a classic. This is I Cho Anarchy. Now, first of all, check out this intro once the game plays, once it loads. Yeah, and as Chad mentions, this is more just straight camp. This is just more camp than any, you know... It's very campy, yeah. It's not meant to be, be titillating, I don't think. It's not even meant to be erotic. So two years passed since we blew up the bodybuilder empire. But Mayor Mike Hager, a.k.a. Freddie Mercury, has oh, other plans. Rings. Luckily, we've been practicing our gardening technique. And it's a good thing, too, because Ida Ten and Ben Ten from the first game, they eloped. They're out of here. No one knows where they are. Uh, bye! There's a new threat, and the only people who can stop it are Adon and Samson themselves. Yeah, look at Ben Ten. She's just relaxing with a glass of wine somewhere. Space, probably. Somewhere in space. She's like, I've had enough of the Buffman. I am going to drink wine in space. And you know what? Who wouldn't want to drink wine in space? So in this game, your enemies are both the Bodybuilder Emperor, Bode Bill, as well as a new threat by the name of Bode Conscious. I'm not even gonna bother explaining that one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Real Soviet Bear, for the seven, for the raid. Thank you. Nice, uh, thank we're... you. Welcome, everyone. You're about to see the best game ever made. Happy Pride Month. This is I Cho Anarchy for PC Engine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show how to play the game, and then we'll get into a serious attempt, because like I mentioned before, there's no continues with this game, so once I get a run started, there ain't, there ain't no stopping that train. Okay. But if you wanted to play this yourself... Uh, here's a brief overview of how this game plays. So you're a very large sprite. Uh, the objective is to not get hit above anything. It's based on a timer up there. Uh, you see all those hourglasses, those slowly drain as you go through each level. And when you get hit and die, I think that also drains the, uh, the meter. Your moves are where this game is the most interesting. Uh, you do not have a traditional fire button. Anytime you tap it, you do this, which is a homing attack that homes in on whatever's closest to you. If you want to do your more powerful attacks, this is a fireball motion. This is a very powerful move. You just do a fireball motion and hit fire. It goes in both directions if you want. And then there's this move, which is back forward shot, which is the move you'll want to do through 90% of the game. That cuts through all the enemies, much like the men's beam in the first game, and you have an unlimited amount. It's just all about being able to execute that move. Uh, if you touch any other input other than left or right or right or left, you'll do that sweeping move instead. So when you first start playing, the game is a little bit... Yo! <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to grasp, but basically you're doing Street Fighter motions the entire time you're playing. You're doing both fireballs and sonic booms yes. constantly. Destroy God's perfect creation, Adam! <laughs> Take that, Adam. So right now this is a shit run, so I'm just gonna kill kill off the character so you can see what the game over screen no. looks like. Oh, most important move, the other button is your spin button. Uh, as far as I know, you have an unlimited amount of spin and nothing can hurt you with the exception of one attack the final boss does. Uh, you can just do this as much as you want with no penalty. I don't even think the time counts down faster while you're spinning. The difficulty with that is that this game is secretly a score attack game. Uh, you get hourglasses back based on the percentage of enemies you shoot down in each level. So it's very important to kill as many things as possible, otherwise you will run out of time. Is that about it? Does that cover mm -hmm. it? Are we ready for this serious one credit clear attempt? I think so. Real quick before you get started, was this the one? Was this, was I Anarchy the one that EGM was just like... I think so, yeah. Okay, so this the is, one this like, is the one they didn't on. like. Yeah. Alright, here we go. This is it. Ain't no stopping now. All right, everyone, give Danny your you're gonna be, luck. You're going to be hearing from my controller a lot because I'm just doing repeated fighting game inputs. He is! That's so interesting. It is. It's a real... Yeah. It's an interesting, different way to do a game, and yet I would say the enemy patterns and the enemies themselves are pretty well suited to this mechanic, as weird as it is. Like, they put thought into it. This isn't just a regular shooter they gave fucked up controls to. 
and the score attack element just really adds something else entirely, especially considering you can just spin through everything if you wanted. I should also mention there's four endings. Uh, I've only gotten the worst one. So we'll see if we get a hey, better it's one. Ben 10. Yep, she visits sometimes. Yeah. And she says it's showtime and she gives you power ups. I love her. Shit. Don't get hit. Ben 10 and Ida 10 are the only allies. Yeah. I am a joke. They're the original allies. They are! I like how this boss is introduced. Like, you just think that's a moon up there, and then all of a sudden. No, there's a dude in there. That's just Adam. Yeah, it's fine. It's just the, the creature made in God's image. Oh, nice hit. Oh. Oh, yeah. Every few seconds, your head will start to glow, and if you do a fireball input, you do a massive men's beam attack. And if you can get that, get that to happen at the right time, it's really good because it does tons of damage. A lot of people talking about the font used for the score. Yeah, huh? Yeah, this game is so Japanese, even the numbers for the score are in Japanese. Right now I have 44,200 points. <laughs> Hope you know your number, Kanji. It's just little things like that. Like, why would you make the score in Japanese? Just because the game's weird. That's the only reason. I like it. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm all about style. You know me. I'm dressed to the nines right now. I also like the idea of how flashy your moves are, because you do a different pose for every move you do. It feels like you're almost putting on a performance whenever you play this game. And as you play, you figure out which moves are more effective against which enemies, and you do have to use a good variety of different moves in order to uh, kill all the different enemies. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a unique challenge, even if you're familiar with a lot of different shoot 'em ups. I guarantee you haven't played one like this. <laughs> Where the Japanese flex Mentello? Yeah, but this yeah. could actually be sold in the US. <laughs> oh. Well, that's debatable, but. <laughs> uh, Video Game King mentioned, Video Game King mentions that there are other games that uh, do feature this uh, Japanese uh, ride uh, kanji as the numerical system. So it's not just this. Yeah, there's like Guwange and a few others. It's it's off. It's usually done for style. There's no good reason to do it. It's just if you want to show off. Anyway, it's show time. Yeah, the one power up you want is the kanji for time. Uh, it's that one right there. That gives you an extra hourglass. Nice. So right now we're all topped up. This is the best we can do right now. Now I'm not sure if I can fully beat the game, but if we can get to level 4, which is the last level, I'll be happy. Because then we'll have seen most of what this game has to offer. But just as a warning, this game is very, very tough. Especially after you just start playing. I hate those guys taking off the missiles. Like, what's their problem? Yeah, seriously. Why well, you got a problem with me and my men's beam? Like, yeah, seriously, it's Pride Month, fuck off! Yeah. That's right. It's the one time a year I'm allowed to use my men's beam. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but you're like, oh, don't use the men's beam. Mm, where, where's, where's, uh, where's my non-men's beam month? Well, <laughs> screw you! Oh, shit! See, this is where the spinning comes in handy, because if you see a bunch of enemies you don't want to deal with, you can just spin to win. Boss time. With these moves, if you do them right, you can kill these bosses real quick. Oh, that's a good quick kill for the first uh, yeah. phase there. She's here! I like this track because it sounds like Jet Set Radio. I like that other- I like this different version of Thomas. It's this, like, Cyber Thomas. Yeah. Like, yeah, look at him! He looks like, you know- so There's a cannon shooting out naked men. Uh-huh, good, good. They're falling on me. Oh no, it's raining men! It, it literally is! Arch. Okay, good. Alright, we are in good shape. Though the next few levels are pretty rough. Danny, this game kicks ass. This is an amazing game. This is seriously one of my favorite PC Engine games. Like, when you first start playing it, you're like, what is this shit? This is garbage. But once you learn how the controls work, it's really satisfying. It is so... I just gotta say, I really like that the game starring buff men has fighting game style controls or something. <laughs> yeah. I think that's really fun. It I, just, I think that's it just fun makes sense. Apropos. Oh my god, those, fa those butterflies. The butterflies, fairies, I don't care. I love them. They're butterfly men. This music! Yeah, let's get down with the slow jams. What does this remind me of? 
God, who who was the band that did shit like this? Not not Enya, but uh, God, you know what I mean. Portishead? I don't no, know. <laughs> Enigma. To... Thank you, Snubble. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Thank no. You. I, I see you. what you mean there. Oh uh, yeah, this is total pure moods. This is totally Enigma's pure moods. Uh, Maybe that's what they were going for. Listen, I would love, I would love a hot muscle man pure moods <sighs> album. It's called Pure Muscle. <laughs> <laughs> pure dudes, BMF, pure dudes. Thank you. Yes. Now I took a death back there because I used the men's beam at an inopportune moment. That is the one thing you have to worry about when using the men's beam because it locks you in place. Let's see. Cho Anarchy is it for pure mood. Uh, this game is also for. Its game is from 1995. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is one of the final releases for the PC Engine CD. So by this point, they were like, "Fuck it, just put anything on there." This is the same year that brought us Ane san for a comparison. Fuck yes. Alright, so we have a clown mime here in the forest. I think he's more of a bard, honestly. Yeah, he looks kind of bardish. We gotta kill him. Oh, uh, makes sense. Really the hardest part of this game is getting the inputs consistently to work. Because often when you first start, you'll be doing the wrong moves. And that's frustrating. But then once you do finally learn it, it's like, mmm. It's like, mmm, you know? <laughs> oh, this part is super dangerous. I gotta be real careful okay. here. Okay. It's so pretty, though. Yeah. Don't let that fool you. Oh, shit. Yeah, look at this dude. He just grows huge! Uh huh. I hate those vines, they're the worst. This looks so fucking hard! It's really just about avoiding damage at all costs, because they give you very little in the way of in invincibility. So really just avoid damage. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, he's just doing the safety dance here. Mm hmm Let's see, uh, Dynamax Men, yes. <laughs> this is what the flowers of Robert Maplethorpe should have been, yes, yeah. yes. I agree. Robert Maplethorpe. It's a shame he wasn't alive to see this game happen. <laughs> Quite ironic, Robert Maplethorpe would die before the release of a true game as art as Cho Anarchy. <laughs> this is our best stream ever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all because of the game, too. We're not even doing anything. I also like you can just grunt when there's no enemies on screen. You can just grunt. <laughs> That's the important part of being a bodybuilder. You gotta grunt. That's true. Some of these enemies take a lot of hits too, so you need to know when they're coming up if you want to get that maximum score. It is so interesting to me that this is just like a score attack game. Like, these mechanics are so different. The best part is the game doesn't even tell you that at all till you get the ending, and then it's like, oh, you got the worst ending because you got this shoot down percentage. And then you're like, oh, okay, now I get why the game's so weird. I'm not doing especially well here, though. If we can avoid losing any more hourglasses, we can get a refill. Christ. No! No! Bad time for the men's beam. Use your men's beam responsibly. Okay, some interesting info from Electric Boogaloo. Oh, so this game was designed by uh, Koji Matsuda, who uh, also directed Darius Plus on the PC Engine. Oh, that's a good port. Yeah, so they knew what they were doing. Alright, here's the boss of this level. We should be able to recover after this as long as he doesn't kick me in the face. Oh, nice, solid men's beam. You're doing real good. Alright, got him. Good. Good job. I like that guy's theme song. Yeah, Woodman, aka Big Woody. <laughs> so we're halfway through the game. This is, this is four short levels. This game seriously takes 20 minutes to beat. It's just, you know, you won't beat it because it has no continues. Enamored with <gasps> that back 
background. That's a nice background, yeah. Yes! All right. Number one game of all time. All this game needs is some dragons, and that's it. Are there dragons in this game? Well, you're going to see. Cool. I'm excited. If there are dragons, they would have a lot of muscles. <laughs> yeah, and as uh, mentioned, this is by uh, Bits Laboratory, who also did the uh, NES Ghostbusters, so, you know. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is a recovery for your ass right there. <laughs> Alright, we're, we're pretty good on hourglasses. Just gotta take care of this guy. I love that guy. Call him Gay Satan. Hail him! Oh yeah, they also did Rise of the Dragon on Sega CD, thanks for the that <laughs> Yeah, that's bad. right. Oh, that was a great game. It, it's, that's right, Snubble, the background is the bisexual flag. That's really good. Really forward thinking this game was. Mm -hmm. I also like that it's not too, like, I don't know how to say this, like, it's not too condemning of the gays, you know? It's not. It it's feels more... like more like it's celebrating the campiness of bodybuilders and stuff like that. It's not like, oh, being gay is bad. It's just like, yeah, this is silly and fun. Yeah, it's obviously like, haha, look at how campy this shit is. But it's like, I don't know, man. I grew up in, I grew up in with gay parents during really homophobic times in the yeah. 90s. And I just... This Compared seems to like that, a thousand is... times better than what you'd see in the U.S. Yeah. The U.S. Be... wouldn't be able to handle this. Not, uh -uh. not even a little bit. Okay, this boss can be a problem if you don't kill him quick. Yeah, that's it, Grab Dev. It doesn't feel mean-spirited is the thing. Okay, good. Good job. That guy has uh, ocean tentacles he can pull you down with and drain all your health. Like, and in the 90s, a lot of American humor about... Uh... A lot of American humor about gayness was a lot more mean-spirited, especially in the 90s, my god. They're dropping all these perfectly good men into the ocean. They must have pissed off the Mafia. Okay, and, uh... Blab actually has an astute point here. I don't actually think that's very controversial. Uh, Blab says that the gayness is not is maybe not the main thrust of the comedic targets, it might be more about the ostentatiousness of showing off your overly developed body, and I see that too. Yeah. It's like... It's nice that they had that focus instead of just being like, oh, gays. Yeah, it's, it's, there's more to it than just like, haha, look at all these buff men we're hugging. Oh, I actually killed one of the seahorses. Those things are real hard to kill. Also, the boss of this part is a real treat. You're gonna want to see this. Oh, and of course, more chanting. I always love the chanting. I haven't mentioned the soundtrack yet, but this manages to keep the feel of the first game while being much more energetic. It's not all laid back like the first game is. A lot of good beats you can dance to while you fight these muscle fish men. Yeah, this game is such good music! I really like the soundtrack to this game. It's just, it's very creative. This part sounds like a Sega CD game. <laughs> it sounds like Spencer Nielsen just jamming. Yeah. Well, who do we find at the bottom of the ocean? Well, you know. Is he dropping eggplant on you? Uh-huh. Oh, shit. Listen, I know what I, I said from chat about this not, you know, gayness not being the main thrust, but I just want to say... Thrust. <laughs> uh, what's do says lo-fi chanting to study work out too <laughs> right, give me some timer power-ups please not a single one thanks <laughs> uh don't pay any attention to those guys they're just having fun holy shit oh my god <laughs> we're, uh, we're all just having fun bmf calls the last boss uh the penis de milo <laughs> Yeah, just two dudes hanging out. Uh, yeah, just dudes, dudes being bros. dudes. Yeah. Okay. What's well, better than this? This whale here is actually our friend. We need to save him from this pirate ship, and then okay. he'll give us some power ups. Save the whales. And he didn't give me a single time power up. <laughs> okay, kill the whales. <sighs> yeah, that's the bad thing about this game. The power ups are all random, and you need timer power ups. Oh God, they're back. <laughs> having fun. Yeah, having fun under under the sea. They're underwater wrestling! Nothing yeah. great about it! Alright, Ben 10, come on. Okay, that's one timer power up. Okay, two, good. Alright, we're back in business. We are good. 
See what I mean about the seahorses? They're so hard to kill. Oh shit! I should have been ready for that. Does this game have cheat codes? Don't... Yo, love him! Not a single love one. Love him! No cheat codes. You gotta get through this game on your own power. Okay, got a decent number of hits there. If you can kill this guy quickly, you can regain most of the time you lost on this level. But that's a big if. Ooh, good hit. And I didn't die, too. Nice. Yes! All right, we're entering stage four in the best possible condition. This is good. Now's the part where I shit the bed. All right, I'll get the Febreze. <laughs> if you're aiming for scores, it helps to have at least 130,000 points per level, by the way. That's your the, pretty much the minimum. All right, we're back in crystal space from the first game. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> snowman. Yeah, snowman in space. I love him. Gotta kill the fish quick. Okay, good. He fires homing missiles. Oh, this is the track where there's a dude in the background just constantly going Maji Day, which means seriously? It's also something your character says when they die. <laughs> All right, we got good fish kills. You really gotta toughen up your thumb muscles for this game, especially on the PC Engine pad. It's uh, it's very rough on the thumbs. But if you're a true gamer, you can handle the pain. Hey, no pain, no gain, right? It's true. It's showtime. Okay, clock. Good. Give me one more. She sure did. All right. Oh, man. Okay, this is officially the best I've ever done at this game. Snowman boss. Boss snowman boss! Uh-huh. I like that the chat's having really nuanced conversations about uh, homosexuality in Japan, and I'm just like, Cool snowman! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, it's maybe not the most accepting place in the world, but this game, when taken on its own, at least it's not, like, offensive, I would say. I mean, let's be honest, though. I don't think anyone faced, uh, you know, I don't think anyone was pulled in front of Congress for making this game, unlike <laughs> that one kid's cartoon from America where Buster the Rabbit mentioned gay mom, so... <laughs> we can't even handle Buster the Rabbit. Oh, that was a nice kill on that guy. This is a solid playthrough. I don't think I'm going to get the best ending, but you're doing hopefully good. get a decent percentage at least. And you're showing us all the buff men, so I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Believe it or not, this is the final level. Really? Uh, once we get past this, we're fighting the last boss. So who do you think the final boss is? Oh, look yeah, these guys. I love them. These guys yeah, are amazing. Yeah, yeah. See ya. They never come back. That's the only time you see them. <laughs> also love the snowman robot. He can't jump very high. I don't even need power-ups at this point. She still refilled my timer for me. Can I get a full one? Ah, oh, not quite. We're still very good. I think this game gets a bad rap, personally. I think it plays great. But if you just tried playing it without knowing about the thing about the inputs, you may not like it. But keep an open mind. And you may like Cho Anarchy. Alright, the Algonquin round table of chat has concluded that this game is gay. Good. Thank you. I'm glad we could put that to rest. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot, you also have moves that attack up and down. They're pretty good. This last stage just pulls in a whole bunch of enemies that are never seen elsewhere. I think. At this point, they were just like, okay, this is the last level. We're cutting development here. Just put every enemy we haven't put in a level in here. Oh. Try to get some extra points. This guy is impossible. Whoa, what is that? Do not fight this guy. If you Can't fight do. this guy, you will die. So I'm just going to spin through the whole thing. 
Got it. Got if, it. If you're better at this game oh, than me, I don't like him. you may be able to beat him, but no, he is way too tough. He's made out of like 50 men. I hate it. Yeah. All right, here's the last boss. Can you guess what it is? I hope they're buff, whoever they are. Well, yes, it's a buff lady. Full I'm screen, sorry, full screen disco her. dance. This music. Yeah. And the most horrifying part is, if you pay attention, she actually has our attacks. She does the sparkles, and she does the uh, the homing balls. Chat is you... telling us not to kill her. The chat is in love. <laughs> Yes, she could be buffer, but they still love her. Okay, good. I'm sorry, folks. I have to kill your new girlfriend. That she sucks. is. She's the evil body conscious. All right, I'm taking a shit ton of damage, but I don't think it matters at this point. We're doing a lot of good damage to her. Finally, content for this great. Yep. That's it. And that's I... not true. We have we have plenty of gay women in the audience. I did it! I did it! I did it! I beat the game! Oh my god, really? Yeah! Shit, nice! Okay, I have to look up the ending text so I can translate it for y'all. Love these lounge vibes. Love it! Alright, I'm just gonna assume this is the worst ending because that's the only one I've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. uh, this text is supposed to say, The stormy battle was over, leaving only silence in its wake. The evil plans of Neo-Builder Empress Body Conscious, wife of the now-deceased Emperor Body Bill, were foiled by the efforts of the two heroes. However, the two heroes were shocked when they rescued Ida Ten. Due to, the, due to the repeated onslaught of the super nutrition cooking attack, Ida Ten had become so fat they could hardly recognize him. Truly, Empress Body Conscious's revenge was a fate worse than death. Ending Rank D. So we win! We killed the Empress and the evil Emperor, and we rescued Ida Ten, but he is now fat. The end. Damn. Well. That is now the third time I've beaten this game, and I still have not got a better ending than ending rank D. Now we get to be lounge lizards. Yeah, I'm giving. Yeah, it's fine that Ida Ten's fat. We're 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 not anti that shit yeah. here. <laughs> it's it's less like that and more like, oh no, he's not buff anymore. We've gotta True. help him. So all these credits are suffixed with Annie Key. So it's special thanks Annie Key, production staff Annie Key. Uh, that one's what? that is one's. Is that just? That's a, programmer Annie Key. Is that just a digitized man's leg coming down on us? Mm-hmm. Cool. Graphic Annie Key. Action design anarchy, <laughs> data work anarchy. We're all great brothers. Oh, I didn't mention it. Oh, we got through the whole game and I didn't even didn't even translate the title. Uh, Cho anarchy means super big brother, and I Cho anarchy means love super big brother. <laughs> and there you go. That's all I know about Cho anarchy compressed into one hour oh, of stream. It's coming down. It's almost here. Come on. Almost! We see the pecs! Illustration Anarchy. Special thanks Anarchy. Are the shoulders. Trapezius muscles. And of course, neck. director Anarchy. And producer Anarchy. There he is. There he is. He looks pissed. Wow. I just love all that super high quality pixel art in the game, and then you get this super shitty digitized shot right at the he end. He looks like shit! Yeah. <laughs> just garbage! Yes, that is Drill. Ugh, 78%. Yeah, one player, total score, 515,710. And a key rating, 70 to 8%. I've gotten 82 at best, and I still got the worst ending. So you need to get real good at this game if you want to get the last three endings. Uh, did they hire an actual bodybuilder for that shot? You know, I did not see a credit spot there, so who knows? Maybe. Who even knows? Maybe it was just a staff member who was buff. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not buff enough. I uh, I cheated. I took the steroid route. All the bodybuilders looked down on me because of it. Uh, you shouldn't have juiced. You shouldn't have juiced. Also, if you get 82%, that's still rank D. You have to get more than 82% to get better than the worst ending. Wow, that sucks. I thought that was pretty good, but this game thinks otherwise. Well, that's Icho Anarchy.